I give up. I have accomplished nothing today. All I can think about is 22 Nosler. I'm exchanging a few emails back and forth with Odinworks. We're still in the early stages, you know, exchanging info. But I can't sit here and do nothing. I've been pacing the house. I've been freaking slamming monster energy drinks, so I'm all jacked up. I want to try what I'm hoping is the least invasive thing that might possibly have a chance of working. I pulled out my gun and I grabbed some JB bore paste. Yeah, I like this stuff. It's a little bit abrasive. Maybe it's more abrasive than I thought or, or I think. And maybe I've already ruined my gun and we just don't know it yet. I don't know. But what I did was just pull out a mop that would kind of fit pretty close, slathered a bunch of JB on it, and then ran it with a drill for about a minute or so. Well, here's the thing. This is the first one I grabbed. You can see it's not that black. This is the one that ended up fitting better. So this was a pretty good tight fit, gave it a good spin for a while, and maybe, just maybe, that's all it needs. Maybe it just needs a little bit of cleanup. So I wanna get to, I've already done it. I've already cleaned it up. So let's just get right back out to the range and try to continue shooting our ammo. You know, we still got our box full of uh, minimum charges. We've got six more powders with the 69 grain Nosler Custom Competition. And these are all minimum charges. So I don't know. Yeah, let's just, just give it a try. Because at this point, can we be sure that it's the barrel or the chamber? Like really, can we be 100% certain? No. It might be that this brass is just that awful. And actually, I owe Nazar an apology about the brass. A commenter pointed out the, the big beef jerky bags full of brass, like we bought, these bulk bags are labeled unprepped. So they're not weight sorted. The flash holes are not deburred or any of that stuff. So the crappy flash holes are to be expected with the big bags. If you buy the 100 pack, they're pre-weight sorted and apparently the flash holes are all cleaned up and the case mouth is chamfered and deburred and they're ready to load so yeah just wanted to clear that up don't want to be handing out bad info here's the craziest idea i've had today as i pace around contemplating this issue i've already got a ton of money invested in this little series right with the barrel and all of the bullets and the time and everything i could pick up an AR stoner barrel for $139.99 from Midway. Now, if I could get that guy and it runs well and I don't get round stuck in the chamber, then we could definitely say, yeah, this barrel's screwed up. That may be the most cost-effective way of getting to the bottom of this, as ridiculous as it sounds. And then I could just give away one of the barrels over on Patreon. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. But okay, so this guy's done. It's all cleaned up. Let's yeah, let's go out and shoot it. Let's see if it made any difference. Oh, one thing I want to mention is, you know, using this JB bore paste all up in the chamber area, it got everywhere and it was it made a freaking mess. And I found the greatest tool ever made. And it is this right here. This came in a kit that I picked up and I just looked it up. It's like a $7 kit. It cuts a chamber and something cleaning kit. I don't know. It comes with some mops and a couple of these little uh, short brushes. It's for cleaning the chamber. And I had never used this. I didn't even understand it because it comes, it's just a, a rod with this stupid little thing in it. And then you get these freaking tampon without a string looking things. And you're like, what the hell am I supposed to do with that? Well, I found out today. And actually I found if you rip one of these in half, it goes in there a little bit better. And then you just jam that in there right between the chamber and the, you know, the barrel extension there. It's a perfect fit. Oh, it's freaking perfect. The hardest place to clean on an AR, and this is it right here. This is the answer to uh, getting that guy, because this dude is shiny. All right, now, now, let's go ahead and let's go shoot. All right, so I moved the camera a little closer than usual. Maybe get you guys a better look at the action. Or actually, yeah, the action or the overall action. That statement works in a couple contexts. But it's time for action. We've got a target at 100 yards. We've already started shooting this target in the last video, right? You know the drill. We are not using my Odinworks bolt. We're using the bolt from my, uh, from my 223. I think it's an AR stoner bolt. I don't know, I bought it a long time ago. It's just a cheap bolt, but it's worked well for me in 300 blackout and 223. And this Gibbs side charging upper has a different, uh, what's that called, cam pin. So I was too lazy to change it out. So yeah, whatever, man. We're not using the Odinworks bolt, deal with it. 
Our next load is Winchester 760, 30 grains of it. So let's see if anything has changed. I'll tell you another thing that uh, another commenter brought up, or it might have been the same commenter, brought up that he was still seeing some gas. So I, I've got the adjustable or the tunable gas block turned all the way off, but there does still, there's a little bit of gas that gets through. I've still got it shut off, but I think I want to go ahead and tune it back up to where it ejects. We'll, we'll tune it for bolt lock back. Because for one thing, whether the gas system pulls it out or if I beat it out with a two by four, the brass is getting mangled anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Might as well just turn it back on. And it makes talking to customer support a whole lot easier because trying to explain what's going on here with the gas shut off is difficult. So let's, yeah, let's get to shooting. All right, I don't want to go claiming victory yet, but this piece of brass has pretty much none of the, the marks, you know, from the, the tooling marks in the chamber transferring over. I don't know, we'll see. Maybe we did do something after all. I'm gonna shoot these first five with the gas system shut off and then after that we'll start playing around with it. Okay, these guys all ejected very nicely. Beautiful. Okay, next is Accurate 2520. 26.5 grains of Accurate 2520. I've gone out a half turn on the gas block and we're gonna single load these guys and we'll keep going out a half turn until we get bolt locked back. You follow what's going on, don't you? Okay, this is an additional half turn. Okay, an additional half turn. Okay, that one locked back. So, this one, I went back down a quarter turn. Okay, I've opened it up another, uh, a little bit less than that quarter turn. Quarter turn puts us back to where we were, where it was working. So hopefully this is just about right. Okay, next up is CFE 223, 28.0 grains. I'm starting to think we might have a good functioning gun on our hands now. I don't wanna to celebrate too soon, but those 10 pieces of brass are all fine. So let's keep moving forward, 28.0 grains. All right, that was almost a good group. Okay, next is one I've been looking forward to. Reloader 15, 27.0 grains. I got a feeling this is going to shoot a good group. Okay, 29.5 grains of H380. Last up, 28.5 grains of BLC2.
So this last load here with BLC2, I did get one piece of brass that had uh, a raised up part there. That bit and get, getting an you know, ejector mark, a bit of a smear there. But it is definitely better than it was. Maybe I should do one more pass through it. Because this was definitely an improvement. So maybe we just need to go a little bit farther. I don't know. Let's get back to the bench. Okay, let's start off with a quick look at the brass here. I'll tell you, the first thing I want to show you, if you grab any random piece from the one we fired in yesterday's video, you can see radial marks, I guess you would call that. Let's see if I can find one where it's a little bit more prominent. So now, if we go to today's brass, which let's see, what was it? The first one we shot was Winchester 760, which was the fifth row. These have nothing. Like all of that impression from the tooling marks inside the chamber are gone after our little polishing job. And the case head, like here's the first one. Here's one from our first load we shot today. No problems at all. And that continued for several rows, but then uh, the last couple rows, we got the velocity up a little bit up into the upper 2700s and started picking up a little bit of something that one's fine there you go just a little bit yeah just a little bit of a smear mark there for the ejector hole world's better than yesterday right i mean this is uh this is something we can work with just a little touch of smearing this is by far our worst case from today. It really raised up quite a burr there. And the other side shows a little bit of mark, bit of bending there on that side as well. So that, that's pretty bad. I mean, that's definitely still pretty bad. But here's another one out of that row. There you go, a little bit more distinct smearing, but nothing terrible. You know, our, our case heads aren't, our rims are not damaged. So as long as we're not damaging the brass, we can work with the little problems. I mean, this is minimum charge brass though. So that's, you know, something to keep in mind, but yeah, we're in better shape than we were yesterday. Alright, so a really quick look at our target. Doesn't show a whole lot to be excited about. We did get that 0 0.70 inch group yesterday with Varget, and today's best group was with Accurate 2520, was a 0.88 inch group. The rest today were between an inch and two inches, and mostly the same yesterday except TAC was particularly crappy with a, uh, with a 3.05. So these are deeply disappointing results. And when we take these results and add it into video one where we shot some, some more 69 grain custom competition, I'm, I'm not digging this bullet, man. This bullet just ain't doing it for us. So while we were on the range, I did get an email back from Odinworks. Uh, they want me to pack it up and ship it to them. Said they would inspect, repair, replace as necessary. I have no doubt that they would, uh, they would take care of us here. But after today's incremental improvement, I came back in and decided to give it another go. So, and I went a little bit longer this time. I think before, it was definitely under a minute with the drill before. This time, I probably went a good solid one or two minutes. I let it kinda, I let it do some work. So hopefully we're just a little bit better in the next video. And if, we, and if we're not, if we continue to have issues, we'll pack it up and ship it off. On the subject of the, uh, of the, of the shoulder seeming a little bit blown out. Like these are, they just kind of have that little bit more rounded. But once you get them cleaned up like this one is, 
it doesn't look too weird. It just seemed there were a couple of them that, that came out looking a little bit weird. I guess as they fire formed. Yeah, there's one. Just kind of looks a little bit oddly rounded, a little bit Weatherby-like. But I think once you po polish them up and get a better look, it's not so bad. And looking with the uh, Hornady case comparator, let me throw this back guy back on here. I'm using the A330. I think it comes to about, I think, about the right spot on the shoulder. Yeah, I don't know. Looks like 1.448 is what I'm seeing. Let me check a couple of these to verify that. Yeah, 1.448 is what I'm seeing a lot. So let me grab a piece of the new brass from our beef jerky bag. Yeah, these are all coming up 1.440 or 1.441. So our shoulder moved forward six or seven thousandths. Because I think I looked earlier and as I was resizing, the shoulder wasn't actually getting touched. You know, the first time through the sizing dial, all it's really doing is rounding out the neck, sizing it a little bit, I think. We'll look a little bit closer at that in the next video. All right, so as I mentioned, the 69 grain custom competition has been nothing but disappointment. Our function issues with the sticky chamber have been nothing but disappointment. We need something really good to happen here. We need to turn this series around. So we're gonna call in the services of the 69 grain Sierra Match King. This is my favorite bullet. And that's what we're gonna to shoot tomorrow. We're gonna to come right back at it. We are gonna freaking shoot some freaking tiny, fantastic, sweet groups. You're not even gonna believe it. You're gonna to wanna to buy a 22 nozzler after tomorrow's video. We are going to shoot Varget because Varget shot our best group with the custom competition. This 0.70 inch group, it had an outstanding standard deviation number of 6.4. So it was burning well, giving us consistent velocities and shooting a good group. So I think we pair this guy with the Match King and the groups are only going to get smaller. The other powder I want to shoot is Vitavori N140. This is not on Nozzler's load data, so I'm kind of going to be on my own here. So I've got to do a little bit of research. So that, that's what's coming next. That, that's tomorrow's video. 69 grain Match King with Varget at N140. And this is purely a quest to see how good this gun will shoot. I think that'll be a good combo. And I'm gonna take our 50 pieces of brass from this target and the 25 pieces we had shot in video one and see if I can come up with 50 pieces that are still in good shape. I think, I think there will. Cause I mean, well, really this one, this group of 50 is only gonna have this one that gets pulled out and rejected for damage. I'll look closely, but I wanna shoot brass that's already been fire formed, good bullet, good powders, and like I say, hopefully we'll just turn this whole thing around because it's been a little depressing so far. So I think that's where we'll end today's video. If you want to support the channel, check me out at patreon.com slash reloading. I appreciate all the support over there. And I will see you guys tomorrow, 8 a.m.